Well, welcome to this webinar on mechanical vapour recompression technology update. Uh, my name is Jared Leake, and I'm the CEO of the Australian Alliance for Energy Productivity, or A2EP. I'd like to begin this uh, webinar by uh, acknowledging the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. And I'd like to pay my respects to their elders. For those of you who are new to A2EP, uh, we're an industry association focused on energy productivity. We have a wonderful, beautiful array of members that support what we do. And this is the logos from them. And, and they share our vision to improve energy productivity uh, across industry, transport and ag in Australia. And, uh, and with their help and, and the work that we do, we're really fostering smart and fast decarbonisation in Australia. For this webinar today, uh, this will be recorded and we'll be issuing the recording and the slides to people that are registered uh, probably early next week. Uh, we endeavour to uh, answer questions today and, and as the speakers are, are talking, you feel free to, to open that Q&A box and type in your question and upvote other people's uh, questions as, as you like. And uh, we'll endeavour to get to as many as we can. And uh, certainly, as I said, this is recorded. Q and A, go for that one. Um, and if not, have a have a chat in the in the uh, sidebar there as well, if you like. Okay, just setting a little bit of a scene here today. Uh, A2EP, we've done a lot of work with uh, with uh, renewable heating over the last three years, and here's a couple of uh, the the key uh, publications that we've done on the assessments for different renewable heating options. Uh, with the race for 2030 done a couple of years ago now, looking at different options to displace fossil fuels. Uh, earlier this year, we, we uh, uh, had the publication with the Energy Efficiency Council on, on heat pumps and how that can be used across residential, commercial and industrial in Australia. And just recently, just last month, uh, this uh, latest study of bringing the heat, uh, how hydrogen is going to play a role with decarbonising process heating in Australia. Uh, that publication just dropped uh, last month and feel free to go to our website under publications to, to download that one. Uh, but certainly what we're seeing time and time again when we when we do outreach and we do research is that, that look, there's two main options here that people are pursuing, that industry wants to pursue for uh, renewable heating, uh, that is electrification with heat pumps and MVRs and electrode boilers, if not biomass and biogas uh, boilers and what have you. Now, hydrogen certainly will have a, a part to play, uh, uh, but it, it's most people are leaning towards these other solutions due to the uncertainty of supply and cost for hydrogen and people are locking in strategic plans. It's not meet, meeting, getting into those plans at the moment. So from what we see, uh, yes, a, a bulk of the uh, the energy used for process heating in the, in the moment in Australia, some 900 or so petajoules uh, heading towards mainly electrification. And that's led largely by uh, uh, what is going to happen in the aluminum industry, which is looking at a lot of MVR uh, technology there. Uh, but you also under electrification, you'll see uh, boilers and, and other technologies as well. But you see, definitely no one silver bullet, as, you, as anyone in this industry would have heard many times. There's going to be a mixture of solutions, horses for courses, uh, bioenergy with its part to play, as with hydrogen, and hopefully with oil and gas processing of its part to play and, and closure sooner rather than later. Uh, of course, efficiency up there is, is number one and, and the most important thing to do. So that's it for a bit of scene setting. MBR, definitely a big part to play. So we thought, let's let's explore that. And who better to take us through that uh, than these speakers we have here? Uh, so we're going to have, start off with uh, Yuha Minister from Howden. He'll be our first speaker today to give us an overview of some uh, different areas where the MVR technology is used. Uh, we have Gert, Gert Turnstrom from Alpha Laval joining us to, to dive, dive down deeper in one of the biggest users for uh, MVR, and that's evaporation technologies. Let's have a look at where and how MVR is, is utilised there. And then uh, uh, Jan Hemrick from uh, Pillar Blowers is going to take us through a little bit more practical details on, on, on blowers, uh, uh, such as a bit of operations and maintenance, and we'll get down to a bit more detail there. So with that, I, we shall kick off uh, with uh, with Yuha Manisto from Howden. Uh, Yuha is the uh, area export manager 
Uh, he's based in Fenland, he's uh, arisen early to join us. You are many thanks for joining us uh, here this morning. Uh, I'll ask you to, to share your screen and, and, uh, and start with your presentation if you can. Yeah. My name is Juha Mannisto. I'm coming from uh, Finland and, and uh, I have been working for uh, Howden uh, about uh, 20 years in the in, in fan business and, and former we were uh, 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 flex boots and now, now we are both 2013 bought by, bought by Howden and now we are owned by Shard, Shard Industries. And uh, Next one. Yeah, we have a very global footprint to serve our customers locally. And, and one point, point here I, I, I can uh, point out is uh, we have a very strong location also in Howden, Australia. And we have uh, offices and, and factories in Sydney, Brisbane, Cardiff, and Perth. And we have the spares and services, repairs, maintenance, and, and new build sales. And as you can see here, the shard points are blue, and, and howden points are these, these uh, orange ones. So why shard wanted to buy us, buy us globally, our uh, very global present in, in uh, in the east, in, in the China and in the India, India countries. Let's go on. Then I have a few examples where we are. So, so we have a lot of uh, different types of, of uh, M, uh, compressors or fans to, to serve these uh, for our MVR, we have industrial compression. Then we have this turbo fans. What I'm, I'm selling from Finland, and we are manufacturing from Frankfurt, Germany. Then we have these uh, environmental compressors for wastewater and marine, and then we have steam turbines. And uh, what we have for for turbo fans, uh, all days we are not running turbo fans with the electric motor. Then we are using steam turbines, what we are manufacturing also in, in Frankenthal, so we, we can offer complete massive, complete package. We can go on. Uh, background, typical MVR applications, what we have, we have evaporations. Uh, when we are talking about, uh, about the dairy business, then the delta T is low, five to nine degrees, but and then the temperature range is from coming from 50 degrees to 100 degrees. Then we have a higher, higher delta T applications for crystallizers. Typical, we, we, we go with the two or three stage machine delta T to 25. And then, then we are talking about the low volumes, but, but higher the, uh, pressure increase. Oh, and of course, here uh, more and more we go to heat pumps. I have some, I have some uh, uh, I have some examples when we go very high delta T uh, at the later. Typically, we go more than more than thirty degrees of of uh, delta. We can continue. I have here some uh, project examples where we are working at the moment. This is very common now, battery material recycling, because the batteries for, for the cars and ex examples. Uh, yeah. We can, there is a compact machines, inlet temperatures 80 degrees or very low 40, 43 deg degrees. And, and scope of supply for, for this process goes two times of the one stage machine and one, one two stage turbo fan. And, and single machine, we can go over to 10 degrees of delta. And this is also 
this is a medium volume, high delta T, high power, power was uh, like three megawatts machines. It's a NACL prime concentration, medium was steam and two stage turbofan package. So, so how, how we do it, uh, first stage is, is blowing directly to other states, inlet and doubles the pressure mainly. And delta T, we can we can go up to 19 degrees in, in this application, and a very very strong uh, construction. This is a PID design, and and uh, yeah, and we can continue. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is our latest latest uh, reference. This is lithium extraction from wastewater. This is also in in a battery mining mining business. Mass flow is only ten tons per hour. Inlet temperature sixty seven, but but total delta T with the three machines is thirty two. Is uh, quite high, more more than ten degrees in in each. Each machine, and you can see the layout how how we can do it, and and uh, every stage is it's a going down for one or two sizes of, of the of the of the flowers because of the density at the inlet and that's steam flow. Next one. Here is our our biggest project. Is it's a world biggest uh, sugar factory in, in Egypt and, and we have delivered uh, three state turbo packets. This is a one of the line what we have there. There's a 2.5 meter impeller and a four meters uh, wide of the uh, height of the casing and, and the total length of, of the fans are seven point some, something meters. It's a huge fan so, so we can deliver big packets or, or then we can go to com, com, combine the small units, what we have. Next one. This is a chemical application, very, very compact package, also four stages. And here's some example of the layout, how we can do the four stages. And with the with the four stages, we can go to up to 35 degrees of delta in, in the inlet condition near the atmospheric. Next one. And this is a one uh, ethanol project. It's ethanol distillation. And because of ethanol is, is in the process, we have ATIX uh, certified certification for this project. and, and and handle this uh, ethanol gas. Uh, mass flow is only 20 tons per hour, but when we are operating very, very, very deep in, in, in a vacuum, 35 degrees. So, so then we have, can handle with three stages 26.5 degrees of delta. And, and you can see if, if we are. On the lower picture of the fan, it's a huge fan, but the motor is motor is small, only 300 kilowatts or something, because we are we are operating in a deep vacuum. Next one, please. And th this is a uh, also latest. It's a uh, ethanol distillation and and pharma. It's a, it's in Denmark, and uh, we can have delta T with five states. Uh, application of 40, 47 degrees and uh, and the volume flow is 16 tons per hour. Then we have a uh, turbo fans. We have some application with what we have now searching about when we we can do. 12 stages with the turbofans, but 
Of course, we need a cooling uh, spraying system between the fans to lower the temperature. Uh, and this application is a 15 megawatt nominal system power. But when we are, we can go to the next one. Next slide. When we are how then we can do this this a different way um, way uh, to reduce the footprint to have a little bit better efficiency, but we can use KKK compressors, Kanukupan con compressors in the last stages to to reduce the footprint and and get a more pressure increase. And, and then we have more efficient way to do it. Good. I yeah. think this is this is all what I, I I need to I had to tell you in here. And and here is my contact information. Free, feel free to contact me and and ask more questions. But and, this time, thank you yeah. so much for that. Uh, you are. Uh, it seems to be a very big change over the last, uh, I'll say, three to five years, where it was almost unusual to have more than one or two uh, fans in series. But now that seems to be common, three, four or five or more. That That's certainly what you're seeing. This is, this is certainly the trend that you're seeing as well, then? Yeah, this is the trend okay. that... that that we are competing about, about the poor compressor because the fan technology have a more, it's more efficient. We can, we can go to 86% of efficiency comparing to two compressors, which are something like 65 to 70 uh, mm. percent efficiency. And really? this is and interesting uh, for, for the customers and electric prices. And you gave a couple of examples of the compression ratio, and it looks like you're about 1.2, 1.3 or so per stage. Is that is that correct? I've just got a question here from the audience about that uh, compression ratio per stage. About 1.2, 1.3, maybe a little bit higher? Yeah, 1.3 and a little bit higher, depending on the, of the in, inlet temperature, of course. And so that's more more ra higher ratio at the higher temperature? Oh, I've got there yeah. the way. Yep. Yeah. When we are operating near to atmospheric, then, then we can get the higher. And and is sort of a, a rules of thumb about uh, uh, input power per uh, kilogram of steam per, per degree Celsius of, of lift or similar. Uh, it, do you have some some rules of thumb to take away there? I I know we could uh, bring up some kind of efficiency curves and what have you, and and relate it to those, but. Uh, is, is there some sort of rules of thumb for input per ki per kilogram of, of steam uh, for kilowatts that you may be able to suggest there? No, we are, we are calculating uh, uh, case by case, case this one. Uh, there's no rule because because the inlet conditions may vary a, a lot. Uh, as I, uh, in, in our examples, there was a 36 degrees inlet temperature, and then we can go up to 120 degrees of our temperature in inlet. So, so there is no rule that that we we can point out in in every cases. But but it's easy to calculate calculate the powers and and uh, check check the examples and looking looking to write a combination of the fans, how many and and what is the best inlet temperature. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, we shall keep moving now. And I thought let's uh, uh, change gears and, and have a look at uh, more direct applications, evaporation being a, a very big uh, user of MVR technology. And with that, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Gert Ternström uh, to there. And Gert, I'll get you to change your, uh, to start sharing your screen. Um, Gert uh, is uh, Alpha Laval's 
uh, expert head of global sales for evaporation systems and uh, and he's been with the company for many years uh, a chemical engineering background and worked across uh, food processing biofuels petrochemicals oil refineries so uh, comes to us with with a really strong understanding of evaporation systems and uh, across many different industries uh, good over to you really really keen to see how uh, the the MBRs are being used across different industries and and uh, what sort of results and things they're getting thank you very much Jared <clears throat> and uh, let's see if I can share some some user experience here of the fans uh, <clears throat> first of all uh, a short introduction for you that have not uh, heard of Alpha Laval for in some, so much details so um it, Alfa Laval is a leading global provider of uh, first-rate products in the, in the three core areas of uh, heat transfer, separation, and fluid handling, with a, a heritage from the dairy industry in the, in the first place. And overall, we aim to enhance the productivity and competitiveness of our customers in energy, environment, food, and the marine industry. Uh, it was a company founded 134 years ago in Sweden and where we still uh, have our headquarters and where I'm based uh, at, uh, in a dull morning here in, in Sweden and, and far from heat wave, I can tell you. Um, but that's, that's uh, not too bad anyway. Um, so with that said, I mean, now there was a lot of fluffy words, but the, 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 the main point is it's very difficult to, to capture Alfa Laval in, in, a, in, in a very short description because we are dealing with uh, uh, core technologies and, and uh, three core technologies in, in, a, in a wide array of markets uh, and basically uh, available in all industries. Um, so let's just focus down to the uh, to the uh, evaporation side of it. And the next ten minutes, I will try to introduce you to the uh, the potential of energy savings in evaporation, and in particular, then how we can improve carbon footprint uh, in our operations with MVR technologies. I will share a few examples of uh, how we have used in Alfa Laval MVR fans in industrial evaporation. And, and to the right on the, this slide, you can see uh, an Alfa Laval plate evaporator, and that's, that's sort of the key to the uh, to my my role in Alfa Laval. And a few words on on that first, on on how we fit into the evaporation industry. Uh, one of the core technologies that we mentioned here was the uh, the heat transfer, and in that we are the world leader in in plate heat exchangers. And uh, this has led us to design plate evaporators, and with those plate evaporators, we are then building evaporation systems. And that's that's how we fit into the building picture. And of course, then then MVR is is a key uh, part of that uh, of those systems these days. And then we're going to look at some uh, selected installation examples and see what it can look like. Just a, a few words on the on the on the evaporation technology and and the traditional technology for evaporation systems is uh, the shell and tube falling film evaporator, and it's still the absolutely most uh, used technology. And the plate evaporator uh, that uh, we are looking at then is is uh, was developed by Alfa Laval here and, and has only been around for thirty years which is a bit short in process industry. And as you can see on the slide, the plate evaporator offers a more compact installation with this also saving in steel and concrete, uh, reducing further the, the, the carbon footprint of the installation. But for this purpose now, looking at the energy efficiency of the evaporation technology, uh, the, the actual technology choice of technology is of less importance. Boiling water is always going to consume the same amount of energy, and I think that's the key to to the uh, the the, uh, the evaporation uh, process here. And and that very short, uh, really uh, comparison and background. And uh, together with drying, uh, the evaporation is the most energy intensive unit operation in the process industry. And then of course uh, uh, that's due to the latent heat of water. And let me highlight here with just a short example. If you look at heating uh, uh, water, one ton of water from, from ambient up to 100 degrees, and comparing that to uh, heating or to evaporating one ton of water, and the, the energy is about seven times more needed to evaporate the, 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 the water, which is just giving some flavor of, of, of the, the, the potential of, of, uh, of uh, uh, looking at this part of it for, for energy savings. 
And then, then take that into the evaporation world. And um, we, let's look at what options are available to reduce that energy consumption in evaporation systems. Now we're getting a bit technical. I'll try to, to walk you through this, uh, this part here. Now, evaporation system can be designed in different configurations. And we start here um, with a comparison of the energy consumption of three different systems or so configuration systems. And to the left here, we start with the basic two effect systems, basically talking about having uh, 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 evaporation uh, or the evaporated vapors reused once. That's the first sort of st standard system. Uh, we have uh, uh, 0.4 of, of uh, um, uh, kilowatt hours per kilo of evaporated water. So next one is using a thermal vapor recompression uh, or called TVR. It's basically a static ejector which makes it possible to reuse even more vapors, making it short. And that was further cutting the, uh, the, the energy consumption dramatically with more than, more than half. And then we have the, the, what we're talking about here today, it's, it's uh, taking it all the way to, to using, uh, to electrifying the, the process and, and using a fan or MVR to, to, uh, to run the, the process that's uh, reducing it uh, with almost 90%. Now that is then uh, comparing uh, thermal energy with uh, uh, electrical energy, which is, is a bit difficult to, uh, to, uh, uh, to do uh, one by one. So looking at the, uh, taking into the, uh, looking into the cost of, of running this uh, system instead, uh, we can make, get some better feel for how, what that means. So here I've taken some general, generic uh, uh, figures on energy cost and looking at a uh, evaporation system uh, at around five ton per, per, per hour of evaporation. And for the two effect uh, TVR system here, which is, I would say, more the, the industry standard, we see an, an, an energy cost of around $480,000 uh, for a yearly uh, production. And, and comparing that to the MVR system, we are then looking at 160,000 euros, uh, the dollars instead in, in the same operation, which is a significant savings. But that's one aspect of it, the energy cost and, and, and extending the comparison, also looking at the carbon footprint, we get an even bigger impact. Depending on the source of electricity you are using, we get a reduction uh, with MVR down to uh, basically to 100%. With fossil free electricity, we can reach down to zero carbon footprint for an MVR system. So let's have a look then at the, um, the, uh, um, some examples of where we have used this uh, uh, technology. So here we have a, a, an example not far from, from uh, your, your uh, part of the world. Uh, I want to share this. Uh, example of uh, New Zealand and Chelsea, Chelsea sugar refinery. A sugar refinery is a, it's a process where you import the raw sugar and then you uh, refine it into white sugar. And that, that is a process involving evaporation of the sugar solution and before crystallization. So here we had, in order to cut the energy cost and reduce the carbon footprint, they replaced an uh, older evaporator heated by boiler steam with a mechanical vapor recompression MBR uh, evaporator system from us. This technology shift uh, slashed the company's carbon emissions to near zero for this unit operation and, and lowered energy costs uh, thanks to lower demand for steam input. And all in all, this meant an overall 11% reduction in the company's total volume of carbon emissions. And, and uh, it was uh, the, 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 the reason for the product coming about in the first place was partly because it was financed by subsidies from the New Zealand government for decarbonization activities, and that we can see in more and more cases. And what you see in the picture is uh, yeah, what it looks like from the outside. Uh, the sugar, the, the uh, uh, evaporation system is, of course, a very small part of the overall uh, uh, sugar refinery. And here is what it looks from the inside. And uh, the, the, on the, on the left-hand side, you see the plate evaporators, uh, the blue ones here. And, and, uh, and on the right-hand side, we can see the, uh, the pillar fans here uh, from, from the next speaker um, uh, as well. We can hear more about that. 
this has been in operation and, and working very nicely since uh, last year. Uh, and then we jump uh, across the world to another example here um, uh, and looking at a um, completely different industry, a Scandinavian fish processing plant uh, where we designed and delivered a four stage uh, MVR evaporation system for hydrolyzed uh, fish meat and bones that is used uh, finally for, for fish feed. Uh, the use of MVR fans in this case uh, allowed for uh, the, this whole greenfield plant, actually, this is uh, again a, a part of a, a processing plant, that the whole plant could be built without any steam boilers uh, uh, at all. And, and then that was again an example where the, the client could benefit from decarbonization subsidies from the government here in this case. And the electricity uh, was then coming also from uh, uh, renewable resources or new, new renewable sources, uh, which is uh, plentiful here in Scandinavia, which made uh, the carbon footprint close to zero. And and just to, again to give some facts on on uh, the, what what it meant for the for the uh, client here, comparing to a solution, uh, a conventional multi-effect evaporation system. Uh, uh, run by, by steam, the savings in carbon dioxide is around 8,000 tons uh, yearly compared to a TVR solution. Uh, you're still identifying there that the, the huge impact it can make. So now uh, all evaporation can be done in by MVR and, and uh, I, that's an important point as well. And, uh, and we have delivered uh, MVR-based evaporation systems in a wide range of uh, industries uh, from the traditional sugar and, and uh, uh, glucose industries over to vegetable oil and, and protein and, uh, um, and, and also to a new fa the new world of uh, uh, zero liquid discharge uh, systems as well. And just to, to turn this, it was sort of what we can do, do with, our, with our clients and just to, to, to reflect that back to Alfa Laval as well. I would like to just emphasize that Alfa Laval is working hard to achieve decarbonization as well on our own uh, operations. And we have set targets to be carbon neutral in uh, uh, 2030 um, with, our, with regards to our own activities, uh, scope one and two, as it's called, the sort of our internal uh, uh, processes. Uh, but then further, we also aim at having a 50% uh, reduction of our uh, uh, activities with suppliers and clients in scope three. And part of that scope three is, is of course, uh, the, the, uh, the customer's uh, uh, energy consumption for using our evaporation systems as one example. And uh, as you can see, um, the, the, on the bars here, the scope three is by far the larger part of our carbon footprint. And, and here in, in the, the scope three, um, the, that includes the energy consumption for evaporation systems. And, and the only way for us to achieve this 50% uh, cut in, in the, uh, this uh, uh, scope three is to promote and design solutions such as evaporation with MVR and other energy saving solutions for, uh, for, for, the, for our clients. So we are in this boat together, you can say. And uh, on the very ambitious target, we are aiming to, to reach the net zero by 2050. Uh, that that uh, I'm absolutely sure we also need to add more technologies to the portfolio to add to get to that point. But that said, I mean, we are in the same, uh, on the same journey here. And just to also uh, give another flavor of what we work with internally uh, uh, to, to, to make these investments happen is to, to that we further to drive this development and to evaluate as investments on the decarbonization merits. We're also starting pilot implementation of uh, internal carbon pricing in Alfa Laval from 2023 as a preparation actually for EU legislation that will be fully in place 2026 on, on uh, carbon border adjustment mechanisms. So we will set the price of 100 euros per ton of carbon dioxide. Uh, for, 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 for selected products here to give us a more balanced payback analysis of our own investments. 
and that I would say uh, in most cases, and that's also the the uh, success of, of Howden and Pillar here, in the most cases, the decisions to move to MVR for evaporation is, is justified only with the with the uh, based on the on the energy cost savings we will get, but adding this carbon pricing element will make the investment even more attractive and will open up for 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 better uh, uh, carbon decarbonization activities moving forward. Thank so you. with that, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. That was just short on 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 uh, the external side uh, for our clients and also looking a bit internally on our side. Excellent thank and. You. Uh, Clearly, uh, uh, walking the talk there, that's great. Uh, for those examples that you gave, I know we have in Australia, we have uh, uh, three or so sugar refineries that uh, are yet to adopt this technology. So that's great. There's there's three targets here. And uh, we have a couple of, of fish meal processing or fish processing plants in, in Tasmania and, and in Port Lincoln, not so many. Would that zero uh, fish meal process or fish process, would that work for a, a meat processing as well? We've got a lot of meat processing across Australia. Does that concept of MVR and evaporation work for the meat processing as well? Uh, to some extent, I would say they are more heat integrated with, with, with the dryers. And then, of course, you need to look at the dryer solution to, to run a dryer with, the, with the, uh, electrifying the dryer operations. That is a, a little bit outside my, my view. But, but in, in, once you have a, an evaporation system, I would say, and as, as I emphasized, I mean, any evaporation system can be run with an MVR. Uh, and and then of course if you are can be using the dryer vapors instead like you do in in the meat industry a lot then uh, that's usually the the better option on the short term but uh, then of course you leave that with a question on the dryer as I mentioned also evaporation and dryers are the two uh, two most energy uh, consuming processes and and dryers are a bit tougher to to electrify compared to evaporation and it's still to be to be uh, to be uh, worked more on that that field absolutely and i understand when you've got that a lot of air in in the the process stream like you would with the dryer the mvr technology does not work uh, quite so well no correct very good and we did have a question there in the chat about alpha laval uh, if they supply heat exchangers for heat pumps for with with ammonia and propane and what have you. I think that's been answered already by someone from Alpha Laval uh, in the chat. Thank you. So yes, uh, absolutely. Alpha Laval uh, does supply that as well. Um, uh, MVRs for uh, ultra for UHT sterilization uh, compress the vapor from the flash vessel and reuse. I, I'm, I'm not aware of that one. I know that uh, uh, most of uh, 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 that sort of work is done by Tetra Pak, not so much Alpha Laval, but anything with uh, uh, taking flash vapors and recompressing for, for sterilization? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, th that can very much be done uh, it's, as long as you have a stable process. Uh, the amount of flash vapor is, of course, uh, not that great, but but if if you have really large volume streams, then then that that's still going to be a, a very interesting energy source. And and as long as you have stable stable uh, operation, and that that's definitely uh, easy to use. Thank you so much, Gert. We'll uh, we'll keep moving, and uh, we now move on to. Yeah. And, and then before before then, I will just pass that question on on the dryer qu question. I mean, how have we worked with the M MBRs on dryers as well? I pass that on to Jan to, for the next uh, speaker. There we go. Perfect. Good transition. Thank you. And and uh, so let's uh, let's uh, Jan, if you're there, I'll get you to share your screen and uh, and start with your presentation. And uh, we've also got a question in the chat there, Jan, about uh, when it's about that. Or we'll just brought up now with some good talking about the capacity and uh, of taking that flash steam from UHT and uh, using that in MVR. And I think we might see in your presentation that's probably going to be a a uh, too small quantity for current MVR range. Uh, but Jan, invite you to take over uh, with your uh, history with uh, with uh, with Pillar, uh, working with MVR blowers and compressors. And uh, uh, you started there in, in 2007, so you've got a great long history there and uh, recently moved to Australia. So uh, welcome to the country, welcome to the heat in September. And But uh, well, let us take you through your presentation, please, uh, Jan. Thanks. Yeah, can you see my screen? I'm sure can. We can hear you well. 
All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for introducing. Um, uh, to speak a bit further about me, yeah, I'm working with Pillar since 2007, 16 years now, basically in international sales to start with. And I was always working for the uh, MVR business in that range. And the latest or the last years, I was the product manager for our vapor fan, the smallest solution for steam compression. I will get to that in a minute. And so, yeah, and now I'm here in Australia for the newly funded subsidiary here in Brisbane. And to shortly introduce our company, for those who don't know Pillar, Pillar was funded 1909 by Mr. Anton Pillar. And we are basically located directly in the center of Germany, what you can see here. Nowadays, we have more than 500 employees working globally. Here you can see where we are located in the world. And as mentioned, the latest or the newest funded subsidiary that is here with me in Brisbane. But now getting back to the MVR um, um, discussion, um, we heard a lot how that works. So I, there's no need to, to inform much about this slide. Basically, always when there's vapor coming from process or when there's waste heat that can be recovered and uh, compressed to higher temperatures with our blowers and then be reused as a energy resource. And we had that. So there are lots of systems where these kind of applications are used like evaporation as the major example, but also crystallization distillations. And yes, we have used um, or we were involved in projects with drying systems. And now how do we fit in with our portfolio in the MVR technology? I just want to give you a quick glance of the product portfolio, what we have there, and that is our pillar vapor line. You can see on the left-hand side, that is our vapor flex. The vapor flex is the well-established um, MVR compression blower since the beginning of the 1980s, we are producing this uh, product range. In the center here, you can see our latest development that is the Vapor Max. Here we combined technology from blowers and we used also elements from compressors to achieve a very high compression ratio. And on the right hand side, that is the pillar vapor fan our smallest solution for steam compression. And you can see already the small footprint, what we are able to achieve with the vertical alignment. And yeah, well, as I said, this is the uh, solution for very low mass flows. When we speak about our blowers, we can highlight them in five different major um, topics. It is very flexible, especially with our vapor flex and uh, many impeller solutions we have to design for um, all sorts of process conditions. So it's flexible and very cost effective. We have with the blower design a very compact and robust design. I will get to that in more details in a second. And also when it comes to maintenance costs, maintenance costs I will speak about that in a, in a minute as well. They are extremely low. We are able with that blower design to achieve very high efficiencies. And also we've seen that before, um, it is possible to align them in multi-stage without any doubt. When it comes to references and experience, um, I didn't bring too much uh, case studies directly, but there are various. We've seen some, we are involved in similar processes and in in really in gazillion applications where we see where these uh, kind of technology can be used. With the 40 years we are in that business now, we have more than 5,000 5, installations of our blowers meanwhile. Here I wanna show you the performance range we are able to cover with our vapor line. On the left-hand side with the purple area, you can see what the vapor fan is capable of. These conditions, what you see here, they are in ambient. So at 100 degrees C, saturated steam. So uh, not to mix up on that axis, this is logarithmic. So this is not linear. 
um, not to confuse you. So the vapor fan itself is for very low flows, up to five tons per hour in ambient conditions. The vapor flex, that is as the name says, and as I said before, very flexible, and we can achieve a mass flow up to 250 tons per hour easily, and that's still with very high delta Ts. Speaking of high delta Ts, now it comes to our vapor max. And here you can see in single stage, we have a higher compression ratio, and we are able to achieve an ambient conditions up to 18 Kelvin nearly. Now, apart from MVR, how can, how can that also be used? Nowadays, speaking, and what we heard already, um, of reducing energy and CO2 outputs, retrofitting units, that is a very good solution to use the, um, the overhead vapor coming out with heat pump systems and MVR technology to regain that uh, energy. What you see here is a Sankey diagram. And on the left-hand side, without that heat pump system, you can see how much fossil fuel resources need to be input or need to be used to heat up steam, which is then used for the process, but also in a big amount um, vapors out as just plain waste. And this is wasted energy at the end. So if you decide to install a heat pump system Whatever the vapor outcome is, of course, that needs to be uh, evaluated precisely. It can either, either be um, recompressed directly or you flash it with an evaporation system. The steam coming out of that at low temperatures will then be recompressed to a higher temperature and then reused in a system as energy or as heat source. And you can see the input of fossil resources and electricity is way lower and the output of waste heat, that is of course way lower. Meanwhile, over the past decade, we have more than 35 of such uh, um, installations where we were involved and they vary from all sorts. We talked about sugar already, but also in petrochemical industry and even in beverage, alcohol, food industry, name them everywhere. It's very popular at the moment. But now uh, I wanna talk a bit about the advantages, what we have with that blower design, and also when it comes to such installations. Speaking about installation, what you see here on the right-hand side in that picture is that we have a multi-stage alignment. Here in that case, it's, let's say, only eight stages in series, but they are, installed very close next to each other. And the big advantage is that we are able to install our blowers on elevated platforms. And that is very interesting when it comes to um, uh, low space and space requirements on sites, which is usually fairly difficult for existing plants. So as I said, what you can see is eight blowers in serial on a rooftop of a platform. And not only that, when you sneak through the grid of that level or of that elevation here, you can see that we have the same eight stage alignment, just one level lower. Means on that platform, we have two lines of eight blowers in series, 16 blowers operating on the same platform without any problem. And this actually, this is a very good case study of that project here, what we have with a high amount of energy savings. What helps us doing that is the wide performance range of every single blower what we have. You can see that on that short sample here. Every blower has its best operating area, what you can see here in the golden center to make that short. But apart from that, you can see when it comes to mass flow, we are able to vary. And that is very good when it comes to turn down cases or different batches or whatever. Um, we are able to fulfill that with the wide operating range, what we have. And also always when we are close to that optimum area, we are able to achieve the very high efficiencies. Another advantage is with the blower design, um, it's shown on the two graphics, what you see here. 
This is a cut through the blower inlet and the casing internals where you can see our impeller inside. And we've heard already that it is uh, always an advantage to desaturate up front in front of our blower. That means the recooling with water injection. The recooling with water injection will not look exactly like that shown here. Usually it evaporates uh, quite quite significantly or quite quite immediately. And it looks like a, like a fog actually or a mist. But showing that as it looks like droplets, that shows also how resistant a blower design like that is to entrainments. We can deal with uh, droplets for a size up to one millimeter without any problem. And also when it comes to entrainments, the water injection of course helps flushing that through and the blower design itself doesn't have too much problems. And I'm not sure if you're able to see my cursor. Um, on the left picture, you can see the big gap what we have in between rotating equipment like our impeller, impeller and the static equipment of the fan casing and the fan inlet. The distance what we have on that side, the closest gap is millimeters. And that really assures that there will be no problem of touching surfaces through operation at all. And now last but not least, I wanna talk a bit about the maintenance requirements. Maintenance requirements for blowers, they are extremely low. You can see that here, usually it's always advisable to monitor all the conditions and to use the instrumentation supplied. But apart from that, on a weekly and annual basis, there's minor components which need to be replaced. And that can be done without stopping the operation even. So it's only oil uh, filters or grease cartridges, filters for the, for the drive uh, cabinets, et cetera. And then the, uh, the first bigger maintenance which needs to be done is after three years only. And that's basically the carbon searings for the shaft seal. That can be done fairly simple and usually it doesn't lead to long downtimes on site. First downtimes or bigger downtimes then would be after six years approximately um, for replacing the bearings, what we have on the motors, gearboxes and, and our blower, of course. Yeah, well, that's actually about the advantages and the pillar product range for the MVR business. Thanks for that, Jan. So it, clearly there's a, we're talking a lot less uh, uh, maintenance here compared to a, uh, say a screw compressor, centrifugal compressor, that sort of thing. This is, a, a, I guess that's a lot of peace of mind for people knowing they're not gonna have big maintenance bills with this sort of equipment. That's good. Hmm. Um, Jan, thanks very much for that presentation. If there's any questions for Jan and the team, please uh, pop them in the in the uh, Q and A box. Uh, we've got our first question here. This one uh, will no doubt be for uh, for Jan or Juha. Uh, is surge a problem with multi-stage systems and separate motors? Surge, I, I assume that's a surge of the process. Uh, when it, that's unstable, not an electrical surge. Yeah, no, actually it is not much different as for single stages. Of course, it is to be monitored um, um, uh, more precisely. And it is always need to be assured that we have the variation in, in driving all the blowers are aligned. That means from their maximum um, possible speed down to the lowest speed in the same ratio. That needs to be assured. But apart from that, there's no, it's not really critical. It's advisable to uh, use mon special monitoring systems for that, of course. But uh, really, search is not that much a problem as for compressors. Good one. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree the same. same. Uh, we, we can provide also this uh, CMP condition monitoring system to, to follow follow the fan curves and, and if, if we would, Get an alarm when you are uh, reaching the search, mm. but, but it, it's it's not a problem uh, as a single unit. If, if you if you do the design right and and then monitoring to the system. Gotcha. 
And and uh, what about this uh, MVR technology for uh, brewing applications? Uh, you are your first. Uh, I imagine Howden has some for brewing. You mentioned you mentioned distillation and uh, no doubt on the wort boil there, uh, recovering the vapors and recompressing those. Uh, uh, that's a, a common or application for MVR, MVR overseas or increasingly common. Where is that one at? Growing application, as, as I told earlier, is, is this a bat battery recycling and, and the cleaning the water in the, in the mining for, for batteries. I, I think this, this is the most growing at the moment. Gotcha. Certainly, I know but that. also growing, uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt. In brewing, there's actually a lot going on at the moment. Uh, recently, we have a very good case study with uh, Shivers Brothers, for example. They reduced their carbon emission down to zero, nearly, in that first plant, what we have. Um, we can provide with that case study if, if, if required, but that's actually a very good uh, business at the moment. And there are more and more um, distilleries um, uh, keen to, to um, also uh, evaluate if that is a solution for their plans. And, uh, I know it, uh, it uh, actually leads on to uh, to a next comment about uh, what's happening with uh, A2EP. <laughs> Why don't I share that one and we'll uh, I'll answer, be able to answer that question actually on the brewing uh, because uh, A2EP is uh, holding a uh, commercial industrial renewable heating installations review on the 12th of October, we're going to see a couple of sites with heat pumps and with an MVR at a brewer, brewing location in Sydney. Uh, so please uh, come and, and join us for that one. We can actually go check out that MVR uh, brewer application as well. Uh, we also are doing a uh, update next Wednesday to go through our renewable heating program. Uh, we're doing a lot of different research papers on, on uh, data acquisition, on, on refrigerants, on, on our heat pump uh, estimating tool. And uh, so we'll be very keen to share what we're up to with, with that one as well. Um, so please do, do join us there. Uh, in other news for, for A2EP, we uh, have... Uh, uh, um, we are being engaged to uh, by the federal government to map out uh, the large boilers across Australia and working with UTS on that one. And if you've got an interest of being involved in that and, and helping us collect that information, which will give insight for electrification, exactly like using this MVR technology, uh, please reach out to our uh, Simon Ray there, who's managing that project. Uh, we also have a new publication out on aquatic centres looking for and look, reviewing heat pumps and options and, and a technical guide for that one as well. Go to our website under aquatic centres and you'll find that one there. Uh, finally, uh, if you do want more A2EP, please uh, please go on go to LinkedIn and, and click follow and or register for our e-news and you'll get uh, a lot of insight and tips on the fly throughout the month. Uh, so all that's left to me to say is, is thank you very much to our speakers, you are Gert and Jan. Uh, some great insights there today. I think we can really clearly see that MVR is uh, is a technology that is certainly stepping up and coming to the to the fore much more often. And we know it's got a lot of a lot of work to do with decarbonisation across industry in Australia. Uh, great to see the the trends there. Good to understand the performance limits of, of MVR and 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 also the operations of maintenance and and uh, where it can be installed. So I think that gives us a really good understanding and and gives uh, the audience some really good ideas to go and chase. And, and help with decarbonisation in Australia. Uh, so uh, many thanks for uh, uh, for joining us here today, and uh, hope you have a very nice evening. Goodbye.